Hello and welcome to this video, which I hope is a very quick, straightforward guide to a theory on what happens when things burned. Uh, this was a theory that was believed to be true for well over 100 years. This theory is called the phlogiston theory, and I hope this video simplifies it. If you do like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So what is phlogiston theory and when did the idea come about? Well, in 1669, the German physician and alchemist Johann Becher published a book called Physica Subterranea. Now, it described the nature of minerals and other substances. Now, it's a fun fact for you. It was actually certain that, as well as uh, producing books uh, on, on, on chemistry, it was actually certain that, given the right materials, he could actually make himself invisible. So in this book, he described the nature of minerals and other substances, and he did not use the word phlogiston, but his ideas concerning combustion and how things burn, metals and how metals were extracted from rocks, later formed the basis of the theory. So Betcher reasoned that materials that burn must contain some part which is combustible. So this was termed a fire element. Now what he did was he updated the believed chemical principles held at the time, that materials were composed of different proportions of four elements. So the four elements that were believed at the time were earth, air, fire, and water. Now, when it came to combustion, what he did was he dismissed fire and air as elements that were involved. And he instead proposed three forms of the element earth. Those forms were terra lapidea, which is uh, stony or rocky earth, terra fluida, which is liquid earth, and terra pinguis, which is oily, fatty earth. Now, in Betcher's theory, this last one, terra pinguis, is the supposed fire element, the component that allows a material to be set on fire. So, during combustion, when things burn, this part was released into the air, with flames being the visible sign of its escape. Now, when things burn, they often leave an ash, which is a, 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 a very low density residue that's often left behind. So, with this lighter residue, the ash was much, much less dense than the original material, and so Betcher thought that uh, this clearly shows that something has been lost from the material, and he thought it was due to the escape of terra pinguis. Now, similarly, if you heat a metal in air, metals often produce an ash, and at the time, that ash was called calx. Now, again, those metals could produce uh, calx, which was lighter than the metal for the very same reason. And in school, you may have been shown by your teacher that uh, there's a fine example on the right hand side when magnesium burns in air, it leaves behind a very low density light white ash. So in 1703, Georges Salle, a German professor of medicine and chemistry, published an extended version of Betcher's theory. Now, Salle was very, very proud. He rarely answered letters. These days, he would be not answering any emails whatsoever. He showed real contempt for all who differed from his views, and he, he actually reacted violently to uh, criticism. So this gave him a massive, massive reputation. It was a real heavyweight. And Starr was the originator of the phlogiston theory. He renamed Terra Pinguis as phlogiston. Now, phlogiston comes from the Greek word, which means in flame. So it's a picture of his publication. So, what were Stahl's ideas? How did he develop the phlogiston theory? He said that all combustible substances contain phlogiston, and the more phlogiston the substance contained, the better and more completely it burned. The residue, or the ash that was left behind after combustion, was called a calx. And combustion released the phlogiston from the substance into the air. A flame indicated a rapid escape of phlogiston. And he also said that air was necessary for combustion because air was absorbing the escaping phlogiston. Now, combustion in a closed container soon stops, so he said that that was because the air inside becomes very saturated with phlogiston. It becomes phlogisticated air. Now, he also noted that air is necessary for breathing, and so his ideas on breathing were that a creature placed in a closed container will, container will die because the air cannot absorb any more phlogiston and so can no longer support life. So what were his ideas on burning metals? Well, calcinating through strong heating, so a metal in air also released phlogiston, leaving the metals calc. And this process is the same as combustion, but it takes much longer. So because there's an absence of the flame usually when you heat a metal, this indicated that the phlogiston was escaping more slowly and gradually. And the calc or ash, as mentioned earlier, is lighter, it's less dense than the metal because it's lost this phlogiston. So it seems quite plausible. plausible. This uh, theory explained many of the characteristics of combustion, but there was a real problem with calcination and calcinating metals. Now, Betcher and Schaal both knew that after heating a metal, although calx may become lighter and less dense than its original metal, its weight was actually heavier than the original metal. And this had been shown by Jean Ray in 1630, and it was confirmed by Robert Boyle in 1673. So they had to have a way of solving this problem. To solve the problem, phlogiston was said to have negative weight or positive lightness, since flames tended to rise. So 
like a helium balloon, rather than be attracted downwards by gravity, flames rose, and it was said that this phlogiston didn't have mass, it was said to actually have negative mass, so when it left a substance, the material that it left behind became heavier. Now, how was this theory disproved? Well, eventually the theory of phlogiston was disproved by uh, a few people, but Antoine Laurent Lavoisier was really the proponent for the, uh, the dismantling of this theory. Now, he showed that combustion requires a gas that has weight oxygen. And in experiments with phosphorus and sulfur, both of which burnt readily, Lavoisier showed that they gained weight by combining with a component of air. And with lead calx, he was able to capture a large amount of air that was liberated and lost when that calx was heated. So it was quite mysterious where something was absorbing weight, but at the same time, when you heated that uh, that substance, that calx, it was actually giving off a gas. Now, Lavoisier was very, very suspicious about that. He thought, this ain't right. These results were not explained by phlogiston. Now, although Lavoisier realized that combustion actually involved air, the exact composition of air at that time wasn't really clearly understood. And in August 1774, Joseph Priestley met Lavois with Lavoisier in Paris over dinner, and he described how he had recently heated mercury calx, which is a red powder, and he collected a gas in which a candle could burn really vigorously. Now, Priestley was still on phlogiston theory, so he believed his pure air enhanced respiration and caused candles to burn longer because it was free of this phlogiston. So for this reason, he called the gas that he obtained from the decomposition of mercury calx dephlogisticated air. Now, in Paris, Lavoisier looked at his results and he repeated Priestley's experiment with mercury and he repeated it with other metal calxes and eventually concluded atmospheric air was not a simple substance. He, instead, he argued there were two components. One part combined with the metal and supported respiration and uh, allowed uh, living organisms and animals to live in uh, quite successfully, and the other part of air did not allow and by 1777, Lavoisier was ready to propose a new theory of combustion that completely excluded phlogiston. Combustion, he said, was the reaction of a metal or an organic substance with that part of common air he termed eminently respirable. Two years later, he announced to the Royal Academy of Sciences in Paris that he had found that most acids contained this breathable air. Lavoisier called it oxygen from the two Greek words for acid generator. Now, how was this theory dismantled? Well, in 1766, the Englishman Henry, Henry Cavendish isolated a gas he called inflammable air. Now, this inflammable air we know of as hydrogen nowadays. So he isolated it, he got it on its own because, and when he, when, when he got it on its own, he wanted to do a few experiments with it. He found that it burnt readily. Priestley noted that when inflammable air and common air were ignited with a spark in a closed vessel, there was a small amount of condensation or dew forming on the glass walls. Now, Cavendish repeated this experiment, and he found that the droplets were actually water. His explanation at the time were that, in, that, that he assumed that water was present in each of the two airs before ignition. See, because Cavendish was still on the, uh, on the, on the train of phlogiston. He still believed in phlogiston at the time. It's very, very popular. But in June 1783, Lavoisier reacted oxygen with this inflammable air, this hydrogen, and he obtained water in a very pure state. Now, he correctly concluded that water was not an element, but it was a compound of oxygen and hydrogen, as it is now known. And to support his claim, Lavoisier decomposed water into oxygen and hydrogen. And now that the composition of water and uh, water was known by Lavoisier, he completely sealed the deal. He found that the last objection to discarding phlogiston could completely be eliminated. That ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very quick run through of the phlogiston theory that lasted for well over 100 years and how it was slowly dismantled by Antoine Lavoisier. Please leave a like for the video and please subscribe for more content. There's a QR code that's on the screen. It's by the American Chemical Society. If you download it, you can get absolutely free a commemorative book on the chemical revolution of Antoine Laurent Lavoisier by scanning the QR code. It's a really, really cool read and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye for now.